very, very controversial, very interesting one, I'm sure you'll find. Which book is the Word of God? The Bible or the Quran? What's the evidence for whatever position that you take? And representing Islam and speaking first will be Dr. Jamal Bedoui. And uh, Jamal, go right ahead. Thank you, John. I'd like to address two issues. One is the relationship between the Quran and previous scriptures. And secondly, why Muslims accept the Quran as the final arbiter and criterion? On the first question, there are six basic points. One, <coughs> one of the articles of faith in Islam is not only to believe in the prophets of God, but to believe in the original pristine revelation given to them for guidance and benefit of mankind. They all came from the same source, and that explains the parallels between the Quran and the Bible. The same source, God. Two, none of the scriptures, according to Muslim belief, prior to the Quran, remained fully intact and can be objectively traced back to its prophet without interruption in the chain of narration in the original language that that prophet to, uh, spoke and with ample evidence that indeed it was not subjected to any major change. Three, there was a critical need as such for fresh authoritative and authentic revelation to help mankind sift through the common religious heritage to make sure which is God's revelation, which is later theology that developed. In that respect, number four, the Quran sees its function as four or five fourfold. One, <coughs> the Quran confirms and verifies whatever remained intact of previous scriptures. Two, to correct human misinterpretation and dogmatic addition to the original revelation, such as the exaggeration about the status of Prophet Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. Three, to reveal <coughs> crucial information which might have been lost throughout history, concealed or misunderstood, such as the climactic role of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the ultimate climax for the era of prophethood. Four, for the Muslim also, the Quran is the guardian, the statement that you read, John, earlier in the program about the Quran, that the Quran makes it clear that it is the guardian over previous scriptures, i.e. it is the criterion, as the Quran calls itself in Surah 67. Anything that is consistent with the Quran, a Muslim has no problem with that. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is mentioned in the Old Testament, New Testament. It is emphasized in the Quran. There is no difficulty with that at all. To conclude, in that sense, it is my humble understanding that the title Quran and Bible, which is the word of God, is a misnomer. It's not correct. Because according to Muslims, the Bible does contain in part the word of God, but it contains the word of Peter and the writer of the book of Revelation and many others. And we make a distinction between both of these. It does contain partly the word of God. The only source or criterion for judgment for us is the Quran. Now, why do Muslims accept the Quran as the word of God? One, the internal evidence within the Quran is consistent that it is God's word. Two, there are more than enough reasons to accept the truthfulness of the claim of the Prophet as we discussed in the topic of prophethood. Three, <coughs> the literal and scientific challenge in the Quran is unquestioned except for those who are not familiar with the language of the Quran or its sciences. For example, Dr. Keith Moore, an internationally known authority on human embryology in his book, Developing Embryo, The Developing Embryo, makes it quite clear that he's amazed as to the exact accuracy of the statement made in the Quran about early embryonic stages. The book by Dr. Maurice Bouquet, The Bible, The Quran and Science, concludes that nowhere in the entire Quran is there any statement that come into clash with any established scientific fact, but not theory. We're not talking theory. The, uh, none of the prophets, uh, prophecies made in the Quran, and there are many of them, unlike what was mentioned in a previous program, was ever proven to be wrong, even until now, 1400 years after the revelation of the Quran. Five, the Quran is free from any contradiction, and the challenge is there in the Quran, and I've seen many alleged contradictions that shows poor scholarship and lack of understanding. Six, the Quran is the only scripture that was simultaneously written down and fully memorized during the lifetime of its prophet under his supervision over a period of 23 years and that the major way of preserving the Quran actually is more than writing memorization by generation after generation even William Ware a Western Christian scholar cannot help but admit the accuracy of the Quran more significantly the message of the Quran testifies to its source faith in the one true God love of him devotion to him respect to all prophets emphasis on human brotherhood universal justice and comprehensive guidance in all aspects of life. Finally, 
For 1400 years, the Quran has been the most significant influence in changing the lives of countless individuals and nations. It is responsible for millions of people embracing Islam, all the way from Umar, who was going to kill the Prophet and embrace Islam after he read the Quran, to Cat Stevens, to the boxer Muhammad Ali, to Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and thousands and thousands of others in Western, Ameri in Western Europe and America. In fact, the Quran established a whole new civilization that lasted for a thousand years and was the genesis of European Renaissance. Thank you very much. And uh, our next spokesman will be Dr. Anish Sharosh. Anish, if you would go up to the lectern. And you may begin. Thank you, sir. The teachings of the Quran concerning God, the creation, Adam, Eve, sin, the fall, angels, heaven, hell, Abraham, Moses, the Hebrew race, and prophets had already been revealed and proclaimed in the Old Testament. Muhammad brought nothing new. Perhaps some of this was new to his hearers, but Jews and Christians knew even more from their own Bibles. Muhammad's revelations were in no way superior to the revelations given by earlier prophets and neither did they unquestionably provide evidence of a fresh divine revelation. All the above mentioned truths and more had been revealed and taught for centuries before the birth of Muhammad. Theological authorities demand that six conditions be fulfilled before accepting any supposed revelation can be accepted as true revelation. First, it must satisfy the yearning of the human spirit to obtain eternal happiness. Second, it must coincide with the conscience which is the moral law written in man's mind. Third, it must reveal God's true attributes. Four, it must confirm man's reasoning that God is one. Fifth, it must make very plain the way of salvation. Six, it must reveal God himself in books, through prophets and in person. Neither Muhammad nor the Quran fulfill all of these six requirements. The Quran may fulfill the fourth partially and perhaps the sixth criterion. The Bible itself is the most extraordinary book in all the world. It has 66 books written over a period of 1500 years by over 50 persons. Some were shepherds, kings, philosophers, fishermen. Others were rich, poor, young and old. It chose itself as an inspired word of God because the author is one, the Holy Spirit. I read from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We know that the Bible is inspired because of the fulfillment of prophecies uttered centuries before the events took place. It has also influenced the uplifting of human society whenever it has been believed and practiced. Furthermore, the Bible's accuracy has been challenged but never proven. Its accuracy has been substantiated by historical documents, archaeological finds, and ancient manuscripts. There are nearly 25,000 copies of the scripture available for anybody's investigation in museums around the world. How many available copies of the Quran do we have? And how old are they? I ask my friends. Why did Uthman order the burning of all the other copies except Hafsa 53 years after the so-called revelation? Alexander's Codex dates back to 350 AD. Codex Vaticanus dates back to 325 AD. The Dead Sea Scrolls of the entire Old Testament go back to 250 BC. Some of you are well informed about the fantastic discoveries at Ugarit and at Ibla. Both have increased our faith in biblical authority and defined inspiration. Jesus said, heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever. Now we ask the question about the authenticity. Archaeologists declare that if the material or discovery has been already known, recorded, and verified as prior to what is claimed as new, there are two simple scientific solutions or answers. First, geographical location kept the two separate, separated, thus neither knew the other discovered. What the other discovered? Number two, one borrowed from the other since one chronologically preceded the other. There you have it, friends. The Old Testament was concluded 1,000 years before the Quran. The New Testament was concluded by over 500 years before the Quran. Therefore, authenticity stands firmly with the Holy Bible, not the Quran, from a scientific and archaeological viewpoint. Therefore, whenever the Quran does not agree with the Holy Bible, one must conclude that the Quran is inaccurate. Now, as to the matter of accuracy. Ladies and gentlemen, they have it in the Quran 